So here we go with the uh, top 15 albums of all time, based on my own subjective reasoning. The albums that I've been playing since I first heard them. Other albums have dropped away that I once loved, but one or two of these also I don't play so much, but they still mean something to me. So let's go. Number 15 is Hawkwind Space Ritual. This album was given to me in a squat in Islington in the early 80s. Um, I was doing naughty things in those days and listening to this double album was one hell of a trip. I don't play it so much now because I don't do so many naughty things but it's still there in my mind and uh, it'll always be there and very occasionally when I feel a little bit trippy I stick it on of course it's a live album and it's featuring Lemmy on bass and uh, it's an absolutely brilliant album number 14 the Ramones leave home this album was brilliant I think it was their second album but the first one that I heard and uh, it caused me to go out and buy my first leather jacket. Um, I don't play it much now. The Ramones are a little bit too much to play as you're getting on a bit. Uh, that kind of energy, but I still love it. Very occasionally, if I need to do the hoovering, I'll put this album on and it really helps me to uh, do the hoovering. Number 13, Buddy Holly. The Chirping Crickets was renamed later, I think, Buddy Holly and the Crickets, but uh, came out in 57, 58. I had an uncle who was once a teddy boy, and he gave me this album when he was clearing out all of his old records, and uh, it's got Oh Boy on it, That'll Be The Day, Maybe Baby, Not Fade Away, classic album which will live forever. Number 12, The Psychedelic Furs, Talk Talk. Talk Talk was The Psychedelic Furs' second album. Their first album is also fantastic, but I came across this album in a second-hand store and uh, it meant a lot to me. I used to sit on the bog roof in the middle of Hackney in London. I could climb out the window onto the bog roof and sunbathe and I used to put the psychedelic furs on and uh, found it very relaxing record. It's still got a punch. And a friend of mine said, the guy who's singer, I don't remember his name now, but he sounded like Johnny Rotten, if Johnny Rotten could have sung. Number 11, Crass, The Feeding of the 5000. I first saw Crass, I think it was the summer of 1978 and they blew me away all wearing black lots of TV monitors there were dozens of people in the band it seemed like girls boys a lot of them were older not really girls or boys but kind of middle-aged men and women Steve Ignorant was the young one the singer and uh, they were really doing something different and uh, I ended up following these lot all over the place I guess they were kind of hippie punks if you know what I mean and uh, I don't play crass very much the only thing I ever play is sometimes Bloody Revolutions the single which uh, says a lot um, and is still relevant today I think but Feeding of the 5000 still stands up to me uh, as a fantastic punk album number 10 Oasis Definitely, maybe. Oasis' first album, mid-90s, 94 maybe. Absolutely brilliant. Um, tonight I'm a rock and roll star. I mean, it says it all, cigarettes and alcohol. Uh, yeah, the only sort of Britpop band that makes my top 15, and I still listen to Oasis, and uh, absolutely fantastic. I think... Oasis were the last of the truly great mega rock bands. I think the internet killed rock and roll by the 2000s. 
I know there's still great bands around, but Oasis kind of did every cliche in the book musically. The whole history of rock and rock and roll is in Oasis. But Liam's vocals were very original and no one ever sung like he sung or does sing even today. Number nine, the trees, Polly on the shore. The trees are not a very well known band. I, I came across them, I don't know, five, six, seven years ago, just by accident. Because I do like a bit of folk, a bit of prog rock folk kind of thing. A British band, and this was their second album, and uh, an absolute classic. I've been playing it ever since, and uh, it's well worth a listen to. Number eight, The Rolling Stones, Beggar's Banquet. Of course, it's got the iconic sympathy for the devil, but I often skip that track because I heard it so many times at one point, it did my head in. But it's got a street fighting man. But for me, the greatest song is uh, Factory Girl and No Expectations is absolutely brilliant. I, I, I find myself singing No Expectations to myself at certain points in time. Great album. Number seven, Cock Sparrow, Shock Troops. I heard this album in the early 80s. Um, I bought Cock Sparrow's first single, uh, We Love You, copy of uh, a Rolling Stones song. And it was great, absolutely great, brilliant production. And then I heard this album, Shock Troops, and it's been one of my favorite albums ever since. Um, it, Cox Sparrow were underrated. They were kind of lumped in with the oi, 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 kind of bit right wing kind of uh, bands, punk bands, but I don't think they were. The singer sounded a bit like the Small Faces, uh, and they were very, very working class punk band, for real working class punk band. A bit underrated, I think, and never really got a taste of the success that they really deserved. It's got some thunderous songs on it, but I really, really loved the, I think it's the end song, Out on an Island, which is very slow and kind of sad, and it really epitomizes the working class dream of being far away on some kind of tropical island where no one can find you. Brilliant album. Number six, The Stranglers, Rattus Norvegicus. Back in the day when there weren't really any uh, punk albums, The Stranglers had released this one. Uh, absolutely great album. Now, they were, they were called a punk band, but they'd been around a long time playing in the pubs. And they, because of the keyboards, they had a bit of a kind of a Doors kind of feel to them. Um, it's still an album I play today. Absolutely great. London Girls, oh, absolutely fantastic. Um, yeah, Get a Grip is a brilliant, brilliant song. So there you go. Number five. The Small Faces, Ogden's Nut Gone Ready Rolled Flake, or whatever it's called, the, the round cover was really original. And uh, the first side is kind of just a, a collection of songs, some great songs, but the B side is like an early concept album with a story of the, of the man trying to find the moon or to fly in the moon. God knows what it's about, and it has that old British guy who used to talk kind of what we called double dutch at the time. I've forgotten his name. I you all city comfy bowl too square on your body? Then I'll begin. And he introduces every song and uh, absolutely brilliant, absolutely brilliant album. Um, I still play it today. Some of the songs in that are so classic. So there you go. Number four, Lou Reed, Berlin. Berlin's a very very sad kind of album but track there's two tracks called Caroline Says one and two and Caroline Says number two is absolutely out, outstanding but it's a very sad album as a concept album it's about a woman sounds like a drug addict or something and her kids get taken away and there's a track where 
you just hear these children crying and it's really really haunting not an album you want to put on every day but absolutely brilliant record the musicianship is uh, fantastic and Lou Reed's always good but this is my favorite album of his number three the pretty things SF sorrow pretty things they're, they're quite a famous band but they didn't really have the chart success of the who and the Beatles and the stones and the kinks and all, all the small faces but the pretty things were rumored to have the longest hair in London in 1966 and that's that's a pretty cool thing but this album SF sorrow I can't be sure exactly what it's about whether it's a concept album or not but it's it's kind of psychedelic it's kind of very original um, album and some of the tracks not so listenable but then they'll come in with an absolutely brilliant one and uh, I find it's an album I've been playing ever since I first heard it um, great band great album number two love forever changes I wasn't aware of love for many many years um, late 60s kind of band and a friend of mine once said um, have a listen to this album and I thought love forever changes what, what's that absolutely extraordinary album it really holds up well um, it's got this kind of flavor to it of a kind of uh, kind of almost Mexican kind of Mexican American kind of flavor there's trumpets in it absolutely brilliant album and I, I play it quite a lot it's a great one for sitting on the balcony and having a beer and you know you, you'll get one kind of punchy song and then you'll get a kind of slow one and then you'll get another punchy one and the lyrics are so like poetic it's a really really brilliantly written and performed album and uh, I'm glad that I came across it number one this might surprise a few people it's uh, T-Rex the slider so why is this number one why is this the greatest album ever made because I bought it when I was 12 when it came out and I'd lay there in my bedroom with this little record player mono thing that I had and uh used to try and figure out the lyrics what the hell is Mark Boland going on about and uh, I still don't really know but it really introduced me to poetry and uh, I still find Mark Boland's lyrics absolutely mesmerizing to this day it was a great lyricist and it's well worth I think for a lot of affectionados of T-Rex Tyrannosaurus Rex before that they may like the earlier albums, you know, like Bob Dylan, when he changed from just playing acoustic guitar with a bongo player to a full rock band. A lot of people didn't like that. And I can understand that, but you know, that's that's the way that it went. And by going more, a bit more mainstream and a bit more rock and roll, he, he little, little people like me, little people like me, young people like I was, you know, pre-teen at the time, really got a chance to experience this wonderful musician, this wonderful lyricist. So my number one record album of all time is T-Rex, The Slider. And that concludes my top 15 albums. It's a bit subjective. Um, it's a lot subjective, so you may agree or disagree, but that's the way it goes. They're the albums that mean something to me. There's others too that ain't on the list, of course, and maybe I'll do some other lists. Uh, but that's it, and uh, thanks for watching, and thanks for listening, and uh, I'll see you about.